In this lecture, we're going to be talking about guessing meaning from context. So this passage should look familiar to you already. Uh, I hope you've completed Lecture 5 activity and uh, you have it in front of you as you're watching this video because we'll be referring to that uh, worksheet as we go through this lecture. So when you first read this passage, you should have noticed um, several very strange words. Um, you probably have never heard these words before. So maybe it was a little difficult for you to read. But I think that if you read the questions that followed, you were still able to answer the questions. So let's take a look at some of those questions. So the first question was, what could a Cramock be? So we have this word Cramock, and maybe we could guess, if we look at this uh, word, it's, an, it's a noun, and it says Jack quickly entered the Cramock. So maybe we can guess that it's a place, some kind of house or room. He entered the Cramock and cleaned the various board teams he had been using to repair the jubner. So we have probably two other words we don't know in this sentence but we can still guess um, that this place it's a room of some kind somewhere where you clean stuff and repair stuff so maybe you guys guessed it was a garage or something we're just guessing okay so let's look at the next one what part of speech is Bortin? so Bortin, if we look here um, we can see that there's the word various before Bortin. Various is an adjective, and before the adjective we have an article. So if we know our grammar, we know that an article can be followed by an adjective, and adjectives always come before a noun. So a Bortin is a noun. Okay, if Jack used the Bortins to repair the Jubner, what do you think the Bortins must be? So we can guess that uh, the Bortins um, are something that is used to repair something, this Jubner. We don't even need to know what Jubner means, but it's we can already tell that Bortins are used to repair the Jubner. So maybe we can guess something like tools or equipment. What could trefling mean? So we see right here, he had often thought that his this job was extremely trifling. It uh, looks like it's going to be another adjective because we have the be verb, the linking verb, and also we have an adverb before the the word trifling, extremely. Adverbs uh, describe adjectives, so maybe we can say it's uh, the job was extremely tiring or difficult, something like that. We go to the next question. Which synonym could be used for trefling? Fun, difficult, or expensive? Well, we can probably say that it was difficult because we're talking about a job. Um, and uh, this job was includes repairing stuff. And he has to clean these tools or equipment. So it's probably a difficult job. What type of things do you wear? Maybe this one was a little bit more difficult, but we can look at this sentence here. When he finished, he put on his dormy and went back to the study to relax. So he put on the, his dormy. So we can guess that dormy is the thing that you can wear. Based on the above question, what kind of thing must a dormy be? We can guess that it's maybe a pajamas or a, um, some kind of clothes that you relax in because it says right here he put on his dormy and he went back to, to the study to relax so you're probably not going to wear work clothes or anything like that so probably some clothes to relax in is a zapni used inside or outside um, this is again a, maybe another difficult uh, word to question to answer but if we see if 
we move back a couple of sentences here. We start here. When he vi finished, he put on his dormy and went back to the study to relax. So he's inside. The study is kind of like an office inside a house. So he's inside the house. He took out his favorite pipe and settled into the beautiful new zapni. So zapni is something that's used inside. Which words let you know that the zapni was cheap? So we can start here with the beautiful new zapni. What a fantastic yelker he had made when he had bought the zapni. So maybe we can see here that it's a fantastic yelker, something good. We don't even know what a yelker is, but it's something good. Um, and then we can read on and see that it says only 300 relods. So if the word only comes before a number, we can guess that uh, maybe um, this zapni was cheap. Maybe relods are some kind of money or something like that. And that ties in with this question, what must relods be? Clothes, cigarette type, or type of money? We can guess um, that it's a uh, type of money because we say it was only 300 relods. So what's the point of knowing the meaning of these nonsense words? Oh, and these words are nonsense. You can't find them in the dictionary. Maybe some of you looked in the dictionary, but they're not there. They're all fake words made up. So what's the point of knowing these words? The point is not that you know the words. The point is of this exercise was that you see that you have the skills to kind of guess the meaning of the word. That's what's important for this activity and for guessing meaning and context. So if we review some of the skills that you use to guess the answers to these questions and the meanings of these words, let's take a look at some of those steps. Um, one of the steps was determine the part of speech. You guys all should know how to determine the part of speech of a word based on where it is located in a sentence. Um, we also look at how the word is used in a sentence. So for example, um, this first portion of the first sentence says Jack quickly entered the Kramak. When we try to guess what a Kramak was, we can look right here, entered. This word tells you that it's some, the Kramak is something you can go into. And if we extend this sentence even more, Jack quickly entered the Kramak and cleaned the various Bortines he had been using to repair the Jubner. <clears throat> we can see that inside the Kramak, you clean things and you um, these things were used to repair something. So maybe you clean and repair things in this room. And we guess that it was a garage or something like that. And the last thing is look at how the word is used in relation to surrounding sentences. So we don't look at only the relationship of um, between the word that you don't know and the words around it in one sentence, but also how it relates to um, other sentences. So if we look here, here's an example. When he finished, he put on his dormy and went back to the study to relax. He took out his favorite pipe and settled into the beautiful new zapni. When we were trying to find out if the zapni was used inside or outside we look at the sentence before it and we get the idea or get the clue he put on his dormy and went back to the study and as we said the study is a room inside the house